Coffee Coffee is a brewed drink prepared from roasted coffee beans, which are the seeds of berries from the coffee plant. The genus Coffea is native to tropical Africa, Madagascar, and the Comoros, Mauritius and Ari Acute Union in the Indian Ocean. The plant was exported from Africa to countries around the world and coffee plants are now cultivated in over 70 countries. Primarily in the equatorial regions of the Americas, Southeast Asia, India, and Africa. The two most commonly grown are the highly regarded Arabica, and the less sophisticated but stronger and more hardy Robusta. Once ripe, coffee berries are picked, processed, and dried. Dried coffee seeds, referred to as beans, are roasted to varying degrees, depending on the desired flavor. Roasted beans are ground and brewed with near boiling water to produce coffee as a beverage. Coffee is slightly acidic and can have a stimulating effect on humans because of its caffeine content. Coffee is one of the most popular drinks in the world. It can be prepared and presented in a variety of ways, e.g. espresso, French press, café latte, etc. It is usually served hot, although iced coffee is also served. Clinical studies indicate that moderate coffee consumption is benign and mildly beneficial in healthy adults. With continuing research on whether long-term consumption inhibits cognitive decline during aging or lowers the risk of some forms of cancer, the earliest credible evidence of coffee drinking appears in the middle of the 15th century in the Sufi shrines of Yemen. It was here in Arabia that coffee seeds were first roasted and brewed in a similar way to how it is now prepared. Coffee seeds were first exported from Eastern Africa to Yemen. As the coffee plant is thought to have been indigenous to the former, Yemeni traders took coffee back to their homeland and began to cultivate the seed. By the 16th century, it had reached the rest of the Middle East, Persia, Turkey, and Northern Africa. From there, it spread to Europe and the rest of the world. Coffee is a major export commodity. It is the top agricultural export for numerous countries and is among the world's largest legal agricultural exports. It is one of the most valuable commodities exported by developing countries. Green coffee is one of the most traded agricultural commodities in the world. Some controversy is associated with coffee cultivation and the way developed countries trade with developing nations in the impact of its cultivation on the environment. In regards to clearing of land for coffee growing and water use. Consequently, fair trade coffee and organic coffee are an expanding market. Etymology The first reference to coffee in the English language is in the form K. Honor, dated to 1598 and understood to be a misprint of Chawa, equivalent, in the orthography of the time, to Chaova. This term and coffee both derive from the Ottoman Turkish carved by way of the Italian cafe. In turn, the Arabic koa may be an origin. Traditionally held to refer to a type of wine whose etymology is given by Arab lexicographers is deriving from the verb kahia to lack hunger. In reference to the drink's reputation as an appetite suppressant. It has also been proposed that the source may be the proto-central Semitic root QHH meaning dark. Alternatively, the word cat, a plant widely used as stimulant in Yemen and Ethiopia before being supplanted by coffee has been suggested as a possible origin, or the Arabic word kuwa meaning strength. It may also come from the kingdom of Kafir in southeast Ethiopia where coffee or Arabica grows wild, but this is considered less likely in the local Kafir language. The coffee plant is instead called Bunno. History of coffee relief of a young, cherub-like boy passing a cup to a reclining man with a moustache and hat. The sculpture is white with gold accents on the cup, clothes, and items. Legendary accounts according to legend. Ancestors of today's Oromo people in a region of Kafir in Ethiopia were believed to have been the first to recognize the energizing effect of the coffee plant. Though no direct evidence has been found indicating where in Africa coffee grew, who among the native populations might have used it as a stimulant or even known about it.
Earlier than the 17th century, the story of Chaldi, the 9th century Ethiopian goat herd who discovered coffee when he noticed how excited his goats became after eating the beans from a coffee plant, did not appear in writing until 1671 and is probably apocryphal. Other accounts attribute the discovery of coffee to Sheikh Omar. According to the ancient chronicle preserved in the Abd al-Qadir manuscript, Omar, who was known for his ability to cure the sick through prayer, was once exiled from Mocha in Yemen to a desert cave near Uzab, modern-day Usab, about 90 kilometers east of Zabid. Starving, Omar chewed berries from nearby shrubbery, but found them to be bitter. He tried roasting the seeds to improve the flavor, but they became hard. He then tried boiling them to soften the seed, which resulted in a fragrant brown liquid. Upon drinking the liquid Omar was revitalized and sustained for days. As stories of this miracle drug reached Mocha, Omar was asked to return and was made a saint. From Ethiopia, the coffee plant was introduced into the Arab world through Egypt and Yemen. Historical transmission A late 19th century advertisement for coffee essence The earliest credible evidence of coffee drinking and knowledge of the coffee tree appears in the middle of the 15th century. In the accounts of Ahmed al Ghaffar and Yemen, it was here in Arabia that coffee seeds were first roasted and brewed in a similar way to how it is now prepared. Coffee was used by Sufi circles to stay awake for their religious rituals. Accounts differ on the origin of coffee seeds prior to its appearance in Yemen. One account credits Mohammed Ben Said for bringing the beverage to Aden from the African coast. Other early accounts say Ali Ben Omar of the Shadili Sufi order was the first to introduce coffee to Arabia. According to Al Shadi, Ali ben Omar may have encountered coffee during his stay with the Adil King Sadadan's companions in 1401. Famous 16th century Islamic scholar Ibn Hajar al Haytami notes in his writings of a beverage called Kawa developed from a tree in the Zila region. By the 16th century, it had reached the rest of the Middle East, Persia, Turkey, and Northern Africa. The first coffee smuggled out of the Middle East was by Sufi Baba Boudan from Yemen to India in 1670. Before then, all exported coffee was boiled or otherwise sterilized. Portraits of Baba Boudan depict him as having smuggled seven coffee seeds by strapping them to his chest. The first plants grown from these smuggled seeds were planted in Mysore. Coffee then spread to Italy, and to the rest of Europe, to Indonesia, and to the Americas. A coffee can from the first half of the 20th century, from the Museo dell'Objeto dell'Objeto collection. In 1583, Leonhard Rauwolf, a German physician, gave this description of coffee after returning from a 10-year trip to the Near East, a beverage as black as ink, useful against numerous illnesses, particularly those of the stomach. Its consumers take it in the morning, quite frankly, in a porcelain cup that is passed around and from which each one drinks a cupful. It is composed of water and the fruit from a bush called bunny. From the Middle East, coffee spread to Italy. The thriving trade between Venice and North Africa, Egypt, and the Middle East brought many goods, including coffee, to the Venetian port. From Venice, it was introduced to the rest of Europe. Coffee became more widely accepted after it was deemed a Christian beverage by Pope Clement VIII in 1600. Despite her appeals to ban the Muslim drink, the first European coffee house opened in Rome in 1645. A 1919 advertisement for G. Washington's coffee. The first instant coffee was invented by inventor George Washington in 1909. The Dutch East India Company was the first to import coffee on a large scale. The Dutch later grew the crop in Java and Ceylon. The first exports of Indonesian coffee from Java to the Netherlands occurred in 1711, through the efforts of the British East India Company. Coffee became popular in England as well. 
Oxford's Queen's Lane Coffee House, established in 1654, is still in existence today. Coffee was introduced in France in 1657 and in Austria and Poland after the 1683 Battle of Vienna, when coffee was captured from supplies of the defeated Turks. When coffee reached North America during the colonial period, it was initially not as successful as it had been in Europe as alcoholic beverages remained more popular. During the Revolutionary War, the demand for coffee increased so much that dealers had to hoard their scarce supplies and raise prices dramatically. This was also due to the reduced availability of tea from British merchants and a general resolution among many Americans to avoid drinking tea following the 1773 Boston Tea Party. After the War of 1812, during which Britain temporarily cut off access to tea imports, the Americans' taste for coffee grew. Coffee consumption declined in England, giving way to tea during the 18th century. The latter beverage was simpler to make and had become cheaper with the British conquest of India and the tea industry there. During the Age of Sail, seamen aboard ships of the British Royal Navy made substitute coffee by dissolving burnt bread in hot water. The Frenchman Gabriel de Clé took a coffee plant to the French territory of Martinique in the Caribbean, from which much of the world's cultivated Arabica coffee is descended. Coffee thrived in the climate and was conveyed across the Americas. Coffee was cultivated in Saint Domingue, now Haiti, from 1734, and by 1788 it supplied half the world's coffee. The conditions that the slaves worked in on coffee plantations were a factor in the soon-to-follow Haitian Revolution. The coffee industry never fully recovered there. It made a brief comeback in 1949 when Haiti was the world's third largest coffee exporter, but fell quickly into rapid decline. Meanwhile, coffee had been introduced to Brazil in 1727 although its cultivation did not gather momentum until independence in 1822. After this time massive tracts of rainforest were cleared for coffee plantations, first in the vicinity of Rio de Janeiro and later Sao Paulo. Brazil went from having essentially no coffee exports in 1800 to being a significant regional producer in 1830 to being the largest producer in the world by 1852. In 1910-20, Brazil exported around 70% of the world's coffee. Colombia, Guatemala, and Venezuela exported half of the remaining 30%, and Old World production accounted for less than 5% of world exports. Cultivation was taken up by many countries in Central America in the latter half of the 19th century and almost all involved the large-scale displacement and exploitation of the indigenous people. Harsh conditions led to many uprisings, coups and bloody suppression of peasants. The notable exception was Costa Rica, where lack of ready labor prevented the formation of large farms. Smaller farms and more egalitarian conditions ameliorated unrest over the 19th and 20th centuries. Rapid growth in coffee production in South America during the second half of the 19th century was matched by growth in consumption in developed countries. Though nowhere has this growth been as pronounced as in the United States, where a high rate of population growth was compounded by doubling of per capita consumption between 1860 and 1920. Though the United States was not the heaviest coffee-drinking nation at the time, Nordic countries, Belgium, and Netherlands all had comparable or higher levels of per capita consumption. Due to its sheer size, it was already the largest consumer of coffee in the world by 1860, and by 1920, around half of all coffee produced worldwide was consumed in the USA. Coffee has become a vital cash crop for many developing countries. Over 100 million people in developing countries have become dependent on coffee as the primary source of income. It has become the primary export and backbone for African countries like Uganda, Burundi, Rwanda, and Ethiopia, as well as many Central American countries. 
Biology, several species of shrub of the genus Coffea produce the berries from which coffee is extracted. The two main species commercially cultivated are Coffea canifora, predominantly a form known as Robusta, and C. arabica. C. arabica, the most highly regarded species, is native to the southwestern highlands of Ethiopia and the Boma Plateau in southeastern Sudan and possibly Mount Marsibit in northern Kenya. C. Canifora is native to western and central sub-Saharan Africa, from Guinea to Uganda and southern Sudan. Less popular species are C. liberica, C. stenophyllum, C. mauritiana, and C. racemosa. All coffee plants are classified in the large family Rubiaceae. They are evergreen shrubs or trees that may grow 5 meters 15 feet tall when unpruned. The leaves are dark green and glossy usually 10 to 15 centimeters, 4 to 6 in, long and 6 centimeters, 2.4 in, wide, simple, entire and opposite. Petioles of opposite leaves fuse at base to form into petiolus stipules, characteristic of Rubiaceae. The flowers are axillary, and clusters of fragrant white flowers bloom simultaneously. Gynetium consists of inferior ovary, also characteristic of Rubiaceae. The flowers are followed by oval berries of about 1.5 cm, 0.6 in. When immature they are green, and they ripen to yellow, then crimson, before turning black on drying. Each berry usually contains two seeds, but 5 to 10% of the berries have only one, these are called pea berries. Arabica berries ripen in 6 to 8 months, while Robusta take 9 to 11 months. Coffea arabica is predominantly self-pollinating, and as a result the seedlings are generally uniform and vary little from their parents. In contrast, Coffea canifora and C. Librica are self-incompatible and require outcrossing. This means that useful forms and hybrids must be propagated vegetatively. Cuttings, grafting, and budding are their usual methods of vegetative propagation. On the other hand, there is great scope for experimentation in search of potential new strains. In 2016, Oregon State University entomologist George Poiner Jr. announced the discovery of a new plant species that's a 45 million year old relative of coffee found in amber, named Strychnos electri. After the Greek word for amber, electron, the flowers represent the first ever fossils of an asterid, which is a family of flowering plants that not only later gave us coffee, but also sunflowers, peppers, potatoes, mint, and deadly poisons. Cultivation The traditional method of planting coffee is to place 20 seeds in each hole at the beginning of the rainy season. This method loses about 50% of the seed's potential, as about half fail to sprout. A more effective method of growing coffee, used in Brazil, is to raise seedlings in nurseries that are then planted outside at 6 to 12 months. Coffee is often intercropped with food crops, such as corn, beans, or rice during the first few years of cultivation as farmers become familiar with its requirements. Coffee plants grow within a defined area between the tropics of Cancer and Capricorn, termed the bean belt a coffee belt. Of the two main species grown, Arabica coffee, from C. Arabica, is generally more highly regarded than Robusta coffee, from C. canifora. Robusta tends to be bitter and have less flavor but better body than Arabica. For these reasons, about three quarters of coffee cultivated worldwide is C. arabica. Robusta strains also contain about 40 to 50 percent more caffeine than arabica. Consequently, this species is used as an inexpensive substitute for arabica in many commercial coffee blends. Good quality robusta beans are used in traditional Italian espresso blends to provide a full-bodied taste and a better foam head known as crema. Additionally, coffee canifora is less susceptible to disease than C. arabica and can be cultivated in lower altitudes and warmer climates where C. arabica will not thrive.
The robust strain was first collected in 1890 from the Lamani River, a tributary of the Congo River, and was conveyed from Zaire, now the Democratic Republic of Congo, to Brussels to Java around 1900. From Java, further breeding resulted in the establishment of robust plantations in many countries. In particular, the spread of the devastating Kofi leaf rust Hemulae of Astatrix, to which the Arabica is vulnerable, hastened the uptake of the resistant Robusta. Coffee leaf rust is found in virtually all countries that produce coffee. Over 900 species of insect have been recorded as pests of coffee crops worldwide. Of these, over a third are beetles, and over a quarter are bugs. Some 20 species of nematodes, 9 species of mites, and several snails and slugs also attack the crop. Birds and rodents sometimes eat kofi berries, but their impact is minor compared to invertebrates. In general, Arabica is the more sensitive species to invertebrate predation overall. Each part of the kofi plant is assailed by different animals. Nematodes attack the roots, coffee borer beetles burrow into stems and woody material, and the foliage is attacked by over 100 species of larvae, caterpillars, of butterflies and moths. Mass spraying of insecticides has often proven disastrous, as predators of the pests are more sensitive than the pests themselves. Instead, integrated pest management has developed using techniques such as targeted treatment of pest outbreaks and managing crop environment away from conditions favoring pests. Branches infested with scale are often cut and left on the ground, which promotes scale parasites to not only attack the scale on the fallen branches but in the plant as well. The 2mm long coat Fibra beetle, Hypothenemus hampei, is the most damaging insect pest to the world's coffee industry. Destroying up to 50% or more of the coffee berries on plantations in most coffee producing countries. The adult female beetle nibbles a single tiny hole in a coffee berry and lays 35 to 50 eggs. Inside, the offspring grow, mate, and then emerge from the commercially ruined berry to disperse. Repeating the cycle, pesticides are mostly ineffective because the beetle juveniles are protected inside the berry nurseries, but they are vulnerable to predation by birds when they emerge. When groves of trees are nearby, the American yellow warbler, Rufus cat warbler, and other insectivorous birds have been shown to reduce by 50% the number of coffee berry burrows in Costa Rica coffee plantations. Beans from different countries or regions can usually be distinguished by differences in flavor, aroma, body, and acidity. These taste characteristics are dependent not only on the coffee's growing region, but also on genetic subspecies, varietals, and processing. Varietals are generally known by the region in which they are grown, such as Colombian, Java, and Kona. Arabica coffee beans are cultivated mainly in Latin America, Eastern Africa or Asia. While robusta beans are grown in Central Africa, throughout Southeast Asia, and Brazil, 